The thrifting is getting hot in this town. We're about 15 minutes north of Florence right now and I wanted to pull out on this lookout to show you guys something. Florence area is known for their sand dunes and this is just the beginning of some really incredible sand dunes that are very popular. People come from all over the country I believe, especially all over Oregon to ride their ATVs and their cars on the sand dunes. It's um, a lot of fun. I used to do it in my youth days when I was young and I didn't value my life as much as I do now. Um, but anyways, it's just a beautiful, beautiful area on the coast and I wanted you guys to see it. you guys are going to get sick of seeing this chair and all of the rest of our beach tour clips but it's not going anywhere because I love my Milo Bauman's. We have arrived in Florence and we are going to kick off our stay here hitting the St. Benny's. I came here last summer with my husband on our road trip. Ooh, I already see something I want. Now this says donation center so I don't know if this stuff out here is for sale or not but what is this little brass plant stand thingy right here? I also like that rattan planter. Ooh. Ooh, I want it. I want it. I'll have to go and ask if that is for sale because if it is, I will find a way to fit it in the car. You know I will. This one right here. It didn't have a price tag on it. Oh, I just got donated. Cheap. $3 cheap? $3.99. I'll take it. I appreciate it. You had me at cheap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Try to. Check out the skin soaps. Thank you very much. You're good. Just that? Yep. Thank you. You too. Good start. We haven't even made it in the door and we already found a sweet piece. And now we've made it in the door and found another. <laughs> These are fantastic color. This looks like it is a newer piece, but I really love these coffee tables. And I will show you here why I love these ones so much. My in-laws have a coffee table similar to this. And when you pull on this section here, it raises it up and becomes like an instant TV tray. So it's great when you're having dinner and you're watching your TV and you can just pop that up and then you don't have to lean over and spill. They are only asking $29.99 for this. This is a great little coffee table, especially if you love mid-century design, but you can't afford a $500 coffee table from an antique store. Forever picking up rustic wood bowls. This one here is $5.99 and it has the signature on the back and it looks like this was actually made recently. It says 2020 on the bottom. You know I love my critters. I think this giraffe would be so cute hung in a baby nursery. It's got the artist's signature down here on the bottom, Marie Crane, and it's only $7.99.
These 1970s God's Eye yarn weavings are really beautiful when you add them into a gallery wall. It's a great pop of color and it is completely hand woven. Mid-century brass candle holder, check, and it's only $4.99. A beautiful inlaid hand carved wooden trinket box. It is $5.99 and these look so great when you put them in a collection of three or four of them. Perfect for hiding all your little jewels and trinkets in. Handmade pottery is probably one of my favorite things to pick up. This one here is $11.99. It's got the artist signature there on the bottom. And these decanters do really well because I feel like barware is something people are always on the hunt for. These work really great if you have a recipe book and you need something to rest it on in the kitchen. And I've also seen people use them as plant stand bases before. Very multi-purpose. An adorable little vintage Japanese stoneware elephant. This guy is only $2.99. He's going in the cart. I come across a lot of these 1970s oil lamps, but a lot of the time they were never actually used, so there's no oil residue in the bottom. And they look wonderful with just a single flower in them. The best part about these brass candle holders is they actually unscrew and come apart, which helps during shipping because you can fit them in a smaller box. A beautiful pair of hand-turned candle holders. What I love about these ones is they look very short and squatty and then you put a beautiful tall candle in them. Vintage portraits are having a moment right now. I'm sure you guys have seen them all over Instagram in gallery walls, decorating credenzas. This guy looks really sweet. I especially love his hat. Now I need to find a hat like that. I've been seeing a lot of emerald green in design magazines lately. I always check the cords to see if they are true vintage, and this one definitely looks like it is vintage. I think that would be a really beautiful lamp in a very bohemian setting. That green color is very popular right now. The shape on this one is great. It is a reproduction, but it's got that mid-century UFO style. Well, this fondue pot is not a Catherine home, but it is adorable. It is only $3.99 and it's got such great coloring on it. Even though it is not a high-end piece, it has great mid-century design on it. And I think I have the perfect thing to pair this with at home. I'm looking for a piggy bank for my niece who turned seven this fall. And I think this guy might actually scare her a little bit, so I'm not gonna get him, but hopefully I can find something similar that's a little bit cuter for her. I am looking for a rustic table for my outdoor space. And these ones are a little bit too new. I really want an antique, plus I don't have room in the car, but it never ceases to amaze me what you can find at a thrift store. Unbelievable. I'm so excited about Florence. That was my very first stop. I already got a bunch of stuff. There's hardly any room left here in the car. But that's okay, because we're gonna find a way. When there's a will, there's a way. And that's one thing I'm really good at, is filling this car to the max. So now we're gonna head to the Humane Society thrift store and see what we can find there.
While this thrift store is not extremely large, they do have quite a few different rooms full of goodies. This little area here is kind of fun because it's a kitchen area and they actually have vintage and thrift finds tucked in all of the drawers and cabinets. So make sure you take your time and you look in every little nook and cranny because you never know what you're going to find. I used to have a set of these stacking ombre bowls and I think I ended up finding nine of them that matched. It's hard to find them with the silver still in really good condition because it gets worn really easily. This lamp here is interesting. It's got a chunky southwestern design and I like how it's stacked and it looks like they do have another one over here. What's interesting about them is they have brand new lampshades on them, which is kind of off-putting because it's too white and too new. So I'm gonna keep hunting for little things like this adorable little teak jar. It says 100. I'm gonna assume that that's 100 pennies, not $100. Everything seems to be pretty reasonably priced in here. I had a picture frame company on Etsy for five years. And I remember one time I found a really large painting by this artist. And I didn't know until I looked it up that it was worth hundreds of dollars. I don't just pick things up because they're valuable. I know it's the easy thing to do and most of us want to do it, but I try to only pick up things that fit my style. Little Italy needs a coffee table and I'm going to try to find something that's going to have a natural element to it. I like the look of this natural light wood color, but I want something with a more funky shape to it. And now it's time to hit the Goodwill. I am always looking for great vintage purses for my shop. And I think this one right here is kind of fun. It's got the puka shells, it's got the shisha mirrors, all the colors. And this one here has even got better coloring on it. And it is also $9.99. I think these are really fun and colorful and I feel like they are perfect for summer. Okay, so last summer my husband was telling me that bucket hats were coming back in style and I did not believe him. But now I know the truth. As you guys already know, bucket hats are in and this is the first time I've ever seen a suede one. I have no idea if I could pull off a hat like this, but I think I'm going to grab it just in case I can. Little Deer are not only for Christmas. I think this is such a cute little hand carved piece. It's got the artist signature there on the back, Ned Boyce. The more that I've gotten into the 1970s brutalism style, I feel like I'm more and more drawn to these very amateur rustic pieces of pottery. I know this is not a high quality crafted piece, but there's something about it that I really like. It looks very primitive to me and it's a bird and it's $9.99 and blue's the half off color, so I'm getting it. These are very similar to the Festivo candles that I collect. Sometimes I have a hard time telling if they are original or not. So I'd love to know if you guys have more pointers on how to tell if these ones are authentic Festivo candle holders. They don't have the etched signature on the bottom, but they look so similar. So please let me know your tips on how to identify these in the comments below.
beautiful brass bowl with the leaf design on it. This one is $9.99 and it is half off. It's got quite a few dents in it though. I think I'm gonna pass just because of the dents. Okay, is this a ring holder, a candle snuffer, or just a figurine? I'm not sure. It's $1.99, it's a peacock. I think it's really cute either way. We'll just call them a multi-purpose peacock. There are a handful of things that I always pick up when I come across them and brass and copper planters are one of them. They sell so fast in my shop and I feel like they've been in style for so long and I think they're gonna continue to be for a long time to come. Michelle is incredible at making homemade bread and this is exactly what I need to be able to cut her handmade loaves. What's great about these is you can actually control the width of the slices. So that is gonna go to some good use. I wanted to show you guys this little mid-century pharmacy lamp. I actually have one of these in white and I love it. I think it's so simple and minimal, great design. This one's got a lot of rust on it. It needs quite a bit of TLC, but I just wanted to show you guys this because I think that these look great in a variety of different styles. They're classic and timeless. Not only do I not have room, but I don't have a need for these little vintage chairs, but this is great to find an entire set of four of them. Earlier on this trip, I held out on splurging on some vintage hiking boots, and guess what? Goodwill provided for me, and I just found a pair in my size. These have the really good Vibram soles, and they will last a lifetime. They're $14.99, but blue is the half off color. All they need are some brand new laces. Our next stop is quite possibly my favorite thrift store in all of Florence. And the reason why is because when I walked in the door, I spotted these little spiky brass things sticking behind the couch and my heart skipped a beat and I thought, no way, is that an authentic Curtis Gere? And I turned the corner and not only is it a Curtis Gere sculpture, it is the forest, one of my absolute favorite pieces by them. I don't know how today could get any better. Now all I gotta do is try to keep my poker face while I look throughout the rest of the store. These are my favorite kind of thrift stores because they are kind of an in-between type of shop. They've got real authentic vintage here. It's priced at a much lower price point than a true vintage store or antique store, but at least there are gonna be some really cool, unique things. And it's very clear that the owners of the shop have really good taste. As soon as I took the Curtis Gear up to the counter to have him hold it for me, he said that the pricing in the store is not final. So he said, go ahead and keep shopping and then we can talk a total price when it's all done. This platter is everything that I love about Mexican pottery. It's all hand painted, a beautiful design. It has the artist signature here on the back and the coloring on it is stunning. I'm really into using the same color and layering it. So I think that this would look really beautiful with a tablecloth that I just got in the last episode. I'm looking for a new set of glassware, but these ones here are actually plastic and they completely fooled me. I thought that they were gonna be glass when I picked them up. Did I just absolutely manifest these into existence? I turned the corner and here is a full set of 10. They are glass and it is only $15 for the whole set. I didn't have any luck at the Habitat for Humanity in Newport, so I'm hoping today I might be able to find some amazing vintage hardware. And while we're here, let's take a moment for this fabulous 1980s dining set. This would go for so much money in Portland right now.
If you have a Habitat for Humanity restore in your area and you haven't stopped in yet, I highly encourage you to do that because it doesn't seem to matter where I go. Every time I go into a Habitat, they have the best quality furniture and lots of incredible lighting fixtures. I would say 50% of the vintage lighting fixtures that I have found for my own home and sold over the years have been from Habitat. These little vintage brass misters are great because a lot of times you have a plant that doesn't need to be watered, but it needs just a light misting. I've noticed over the last few years that a lot of the habitat locations are getting in a lot more of the home decor items. In the past, they really seem to focus on building materials and quality furniture, but I'm seeing a lot more of the locations putting out a lot more smalls and home decor items. Which is wonderful on trips like this where maybe I can't fit too many pieces of furniture in my car, but I can fit an awful lot of smalls. We are hitting all the stops in Florence today. This location had some of the best reviews online when I was looking for places to stop here in Florence. And this is a true antique store. As you can see by the things I'm showing you right now, they've got beautiful, authentic antiques. And I think that this is the kind of store that you can come to if you're wanting to learn a lot about different vintage designers. But not only that, this is a great place if you are an interior designer and you are in a hurry and you just wanna go to a store you know is gonna have good, stuff. This is a fabulous James Mont ice bucket. They've got $40 on it, which is a really, really reasonable price. Typically these sell in my online shop for around $100 to $125. As I was chatting with the owners of the store, look what I spotted behind the counter. All of the coffee mugs over here are only $1. And you know I love my Horizon Japanese stoneware mugs. Grabbing this one for sure. I'm always talking about how I love cave art. And there's something about this bowl painting right here that I think is really great. It's a little bit abstract, a little bit impressionist, and a little bit of cave art vibes. They have such an incredible art collection here. It's blowing me away. And this, my friends, is why I passed up on that photograph in the last episode, because I knew that I was looking for something a little bit more unique. When it comes to collecting Beatles stuff, you see photographs everywhere. You can buy them on eBay, but something like this that's from a store display is going to be really hard to find, and I think Jesse's going to love it. Out of all of the incredible artwork in this store, this was the one piece I couldn't walk away without. They had $150 on it. I ended up getting it for $125, and I know that that's a good deal. It's a beautiful impressionist piece, and the colors are just amazing. The owners of the store were absolutely wonderful. I was chatting their ear off, talking about paintings, talking about the Beatles, talking about pottery. 
They were so helpful in showing me some of the signatures on some of this antique pottery so that I would know what to look for. I don't know if you guys remember the piece that I had that has the gazelle and the bowl on it, but as we were looking at this pottery, we felt like it potentially could have been done by the same artist. This piece was done in the 1930s. And again, I'm telling you, I have a thing for this cave art. So we're just a couple minutes outside of Newport right now and I spotted this sign when I was driving by and it says antiques. I believe it is this Seagull's place right here. Sadly, it is closed and I didn't even see this one when I was Googling. So wait, this is open. Antiques. Oh, there we go. There's the antiques. And that one says closed. Okay, I'm going to pull up just in case. But the good news is I haven't had any coffee yet this morning. And there's a little bakery and coffee shop over there. So I'm going to go get a coffee. I'm so glad that I saw that sign for antiques and stopped because turns out I really needed a coffee. And it's very good coffee. So it is called Seal and Rock espresso and bakery and I also got myself a yummy treat for the road because you know you gotta have snacks when you're out thrifting and I just wanted to show you that the antique store is called the gingham dog and the other place is called sea gals not sea goals how clever is that <laughs> I already need to wash my windshield gross so that's the gingham dog and that is the antique store and it doesn't have the hours on there that I can see but they are not open today and then that is sea gals and I don't even know what it is but it's a very cute name. I found another place that I didn't know about on the side of the road. I just came into Waldport, Oregon and I saw a huge sign that said we buy gold and then I saw a flashing sign that said antique mall and it made me think about when you go on road trips when you were kids and you'd be playing the license plate game and you try to get all 50 states and see if you can, you know, beat your brothers and your sisters to seeing all 50 states. Well, I think a new game should be find a thrift store or antique store. So if you go on a road trip with your kids, that'll give them something to do. Have them on the lookout for signs that say junk or thrift or antiques this way. She is so pretty. I love this Japanese Kokeshi doll. She's only $15. And this one's a little bit taller than a lot of the ones that I find. She is just beautiful. This is one of the largest collections of Matthew Adams pottery that I've seen in a vintage shop. I especially love this walrus teacup. I have probably about 10 people that have been emailing me asking me to find more of the tooled leather wallets. So I'm on a mission today. I'm gonna see if I can find some. This is one of my very favorite sets of the brass mid-century candle holders. I really love when they have all the different staggering heights and it's actually really hard to find in a complete set like this. So I added all of these up together to see if I have enough margins. And I think that I do. Lately, I've been really drawn to colorful and vibrant textiles, but there will always be a place in my heart for these old Southwestern rugs that are just in the neutral color palette. This one right here is very large and it does look like it's got quite a bit of damage, but that's just because it's ancient. 
Speaking of color, this one's got it going on. It is only $15 and these make the most beautiful wall hangings. What's really interesting about this one is that it says grease on it, which really took me by surprise because I thought this was a Southwestern piece. So if anyone knows a little bit of history on why this says grease, is it a souvenir piece? Interesting, it does look like a souvenir piece. I have never come across one like this before. See, you never know what you're gonna learn and what you're gonna run into, and there is so much to learn. I don't pick up a lot of Royal Hager pieces, but I really like the colors on this, and it's only $15. I'm a little bit worried to try to put something so fragile, especially when it already says as is, crammed in the car though. So always ask at antique stores because it turns out there is a huge flea market here in town today and also this store right here. So we're gonna go check this one out first and then we're gonna head to the flea market. And oh my goodness, this already looks amazing. When I got in the doors, this place is surprisingly large. It didn't look that big from the outside. always drawn to the things that are not for sale. It's like that thing you just can't have, but I think these would look amazing in an entryway. At the very bottom of this pile, I spotted this beautiful minimalist Japanese Ikebana style vase, and it even has the flower frog in it. It's a beautiful copper and it's only $10. I think that's gonna look amazing with flowers in it. I do not need any more lamps, but I love these ones. They actually kind of look like bowling pins in a good way. I don't know if there is a good way, but I mean that in a good way. So many smalls here. Some of the things don't have pricing, including this beautiful Danish candle holder. But I'm gonna go take it up to the counter and see what they're asking for it. I think if I ever had a physical location for my vintage store again, it would probably become mostly a lighting store or maybe a chair store too. I am known to pick up a lot of single chairs. These ones are fabulous because they look very similar to the Paul Macabre chairs that my husband is on the hunt for. They need a lot of work, which means time, and I don't have any more of that right now. I can't walk away from a single goblet when it looks this good. I really like the simplicity of this one, perfect for mixing and matching. This picture here is beautiful. I think that would be so pretty with flowers in it. And it doesn't look like this one has a price on it either. So I'll take that up to the counter and find out how much they're asking for. I like the little gold hand painting on it. Who has been keeping count of all of the penguin ice buckets we've seen so far on this trip? Please tell me one of you guys out there has a tally because this is getting outrageous. I might have to do a giveaway at the end of the series for whoever can correctly tally them.
Now just about two minutes down the street is the Walport Flea and they had me at flea market. I think that I should have allowed a little bit more time for Walport. I didn't know when I took off from Newport that Walport was gonna have so many great spots to hit. Definitely take some time in between Newport and Florence and make sure you come and visit these spots because they are really, really good. This place has a ton of different vendors and things from so many different decades, all kind of crammed into one amazing giant indoor flea market. You know how everybody shows up to a party with their bottle of wine in one of those ugly paper bags? I think something like this would be so cute to put a beautiful bottle of wine and give it as a housewarming gift or even to your holiday party. What's awesome about these wooden candle holders I got right here is that I didn't know until a viewer pointed out the top sunscrew and then they are napkin ring holders. How cool is that? I thought these bookends were really interesting because even though they look like they are brass, they are not. They are actually a really heavy cast metal that's been painted. They feel like they're pretty old. I don't know if they actually are Art Deco, but they sure have that look to them and I just think that they're really fun and unique, so I'm going to grab them. And this was the perfect way to end the day, finding something that I can give to a friend, a fellow YouTuber. Yvonne collects these John Perry sculptures, and I'm so happy I can send her one. I got it to fit you guys. All I have left to cram in the car is this one suitcase here, and I think I'm gonna be able to make it work. I'm pretty confident. When there's a will, there's a way, and I'm so darn excited. This is gonna be in my home forever. Can you believe it? Oh, and I didn't pay $100. I got it for $75. Well, today has ended up being such a wonderful, wonderful sourcing day. I cannot believe how much great stuff Florence had to offer. I even found some things today that I did not capture on camera, including this stunning necklace. Can you see how beautiful it is? I don't know if it's gonna focus. It's so beautiful. I will show you guys a close-up video because the sun is kind of blowing it out right now. And I also got some stunning rings. I'm so weird. Sometimes the pieces I get the most excited about are the cheapest things that are not even valuable. But how cute is this little teak vessel? I really have a thing for small containers. I don't know why, but I think this is so cute. And I have a sterling silver spoon that I saved from the melting pot and I think it's gonna be perfect with this. I've been working really hard on my teak collection and I think that this is gonna be perfect for my salt. And then this amazing guy right here. I'm so excited to learn more about this piece. The owner of the shop wasn't quite sure who it was by, but he knew it was Italian pottery from probably the 50s or the 60s. And even though he's a little bit damaged, there was no way I was gonna leave this guy behind. The colors were there. It's my blue and green Italian pottery. And I just knew that if I didn't get him, this face was gonna haunt me forever. He's 
You couldn't even force me to pick a favorite of my finds today. Between this beautiful Italian pottery, my Lee Hill original painting, and the Curtis Gere forest sculpture, today was a day for the books. Oh yeah, and the Native American squash blossom necklace. Not a bad day out picking. I'm super happy and excited about my finds. I knew this was a really good painting, but to be honest, I didn't know it was quite as valuable as it was. For $125, I got an incredible deal, and I'm planning to keep all of these ones for life. It's been a wonderful day, and I am so excited to get on the road and head to Coos Bay, Oregon, which is gonna be our next stop. So I will see you guys there.